voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. We are gathered here today on this appointed time that God had placed in the atmosphere for the remembrance of the life of Latanya Renee Owens. Not only are we here to remember her life, but we also are here to celebrate her life. Amen. We must always remember that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And in saying that, I want y'all to put y'all hands together and bless the Lord for the life of this woman. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. We will have a scripture and prayer coming from Marcus Buchanan, after which we'll have a solo coming from First Lady Stacy Campbell. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoso would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let's all stand for prayer. May God have a blessing for reading of his most holy word. Father God, we come to you in that name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord of lords and King of kings. Almighty God, we come to you in the name of Jesus, that precious name. We come pleading the blood right now. I pray for the spirit of comfort. I pray that you comfort her son, Chavez. I pray that you comfort her two daughters, Cherokee and Grace. I pray that you come to my brother, Christopher. I pray that you come to mother and father, Charles, Teresa. I pray that you come because every second, seconds turned into minutes and minutes into hours and hours into days and days into weeks and weeks into months. And they're going to need you. stop by and let's give them a word. Whereas the pastor, a friend, a lover, a co-worker, there's going to be some tough times to come. But we know you are able, Lord, to comfort the broken heart and heal men in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you comfort the grandmothers, Lord, and the aunties, and friends, and family, Lord, that we're going to miss them. But Almighty God, we pray for that spirit of comfort right now. So comfort this family, Lord, in the time of need. Comfort them in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. May the church say, Amen. to live holy I 
have learned, I've learned, I have learned how to live right. I've learned, I've learned, I have learned how to suffer. tribute coming from Tony Young and also a poem by William Fane. They would come at this time. Special tribute. Hello everyone. How's everybody doing today? You know, all week, I've been trying to get myself together for my sisters, for my family. I want to thank everybody that was able to help me and my family and my mother. My mama was a really strong woman, very strong. That's how she raised me. No matter what, she knew, she knew that she was going to be okay. She knew that her son would take the torch and lead the way. So hard to even talk right now. Losing a mother is the most devastating thing that could ever happen to a son. I want you to know, Cherokee, Grace, I love you. And mama lives in, within us. She, she is us. She was really hard. <laughs> she was really hard on me, man. 
She said, boy, you look just like your daddy and rough me up. <laughs> but she knew she had work to do. She knew she had a lot of work. And nothing can really prepare you for these times right now. But I just want to thank everyone for being here for my mother. All the support. All the love means the world to us. And we're going to need, we're going to need love. Because our mother's love was all we, had, all we knew. My mother could love strong, deep. She knew how to love. If one thing you knew about her, she loved her kids. I want everybody to just just know that every day we make decisions. And we lay our bed for anything we do. I just know my mother is in a better place. She's not suffering. She's in peace. I had something written down, but I can't, even, I can't even read it. But she knows how much I love her. She knows deep down. And once again, I want to thank everyone for coming out and supporting my mother in her celebration. And we will maintain to be, st to be strong, worthy, and with love. I love all of y'all. And I know my mother would be very, very fortunate to see every, each and every one of you here. I don't want nobody to cry now. I want people to be happy for my mother. Because she's resting. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. I submit this, this poem is submitted on behalf of the family. I'm not the author of this poem, but this is submitted on behalf of the family. And it's entitled, The Prodigal. And it is in Tanya's, uh, I beloved Tanya's voice. And it goes as follows. This earth has been my home so long, and I have loved it well. But one day I must leave it, just when, I cannot tell. The hour and the minute I am scheduled to depart was long ago decided and written on God's heart. This is a great old world, and I have wished I could stay, but the years keep going faster and the hours slip away. But as I near the turning of the road, I pause to view the yesterdays I've behind me as I journey through. One year into another, till they from a silver chain, there are things that I would do over so I would not do again. Though old sins cast long shadows, however long confessed, with all my heart I do believe I find a place to rest. Within the arms of Jesus, where no heartache and no pain will ever be allowed to touch this prodigal again. And throughout all eternity, my, great, my greatest joy will be that the shepherd left his 99 to come in search of me. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We will have a duet coming from Juanita Anderson and also Teresa Jordan 
after which we'll have words of comfort from Minister Lee Anthony, and then we'll have another solo from Shirley Williams. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine. For its skies may turn to gray. Worry about my future, for I know what Jesus said. And today he walks beside me, for he knows what lies ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand But I know, I know who holds the I feel all right, y'all. 
Amen. I feel all right. Go on, help yourself. Bro. I feel all right. Yes, sir. Help yourself, bro. I'm going to sing this song here to the family. <laughs> I'm going to sing it. I used to be on my text I sung many days with it. Of 
the world Robin be done with the troubles of the world I'm going home to live we go church say amen. amen let the church say amen again amen amen gracious father please touch my mouth allow me to say only that what you would have me to say now I want you to touch my mind that I will only think of those things that you need me to think but Lord, now I ask that you will breathe your word, which is living upon the bereaved today, that it may give them strength and comfort them, give them courage to just keep on running just a little while longer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. I give honor to God, my Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, the Holy Spirit, our comforter, to this bereaved family and to all of these friends here. Amen. To this man of God. Amen. To this wonderful musician. Amen. We just thank God for our being here today. And also, we just thank God for the life of your mother. Amen. 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 Uh, it's a hard thing. I, I, can't nobody tell you it ain't hard. Don't nobody need to be telling y'all you don't need to cry. All of those things are necessary in order to help you just move on. Uh, somebody tell you it's going to get better, they telling you a lie. It's not going to get better. You'll just learn how to deal with it a little better. But it never gets better because just for me, uh, watching everyone here and especially the family I know y'all love it, and it's hard when a certain person that you love is gone I know what I'm talking about I don't know how you feeling right now so I can't say I understand how you feel but I know how I felt when I was sitting in your shoes five years ago my grandmother passed January the 29th my grandmother raised me uh, that she was my mother and when she passed it hurt me I was empty I said Lord I don't know what I'm gonna do I don't have that person that I can call early in the morning no more I don't have that person I can run to when I need to anymore I don't have that person that believe in me when I don't believe in myself believe in me when other folks think I ain't worth a dime but my grandmother thought I hung the moon and, and was above the stars so then the same year in November I also had to preach the eulogy of my uncle and then turn around the next January which was the 28th a day before the year anniversary of my grandmother died I had to deal with my great-grandmother passing so I'm here to tell you right now five years later only thing I got to do is get by myself and just start thinking of those precious memories and I break down I can't deal with it sometimes I like to go to the graveyard I can't go I don't want to be out there like that people will drive by and say he's crazy laying on top of their grave out there because it's hard when you lose somebody important in your life but it is a blessing that you love them the way you do I wish I could get an amen in here because a lot of folks just don't love folk amen a lot of families Family members is crazy they cuss each other out they don't want to talk to each other and it's always over something that don't amount to anything but it is a blessing to know that you've been loved and that you love somebody amen amen we thank God I'm not gonna be long you know a lot of preachers say oh I hate to preach because I don't know somebody but when I seen Smiley and his daughter and, and Troy and I said well okay these the Mayberries they they some kin off in here I said well I'm in good company amen somebody and then I didn't have to know a whole lot because guess what you've done a better job than I could ever do so what I'm gonna do is talk to you all and give y'all a little encouragement amen amen I'm gonna talk out of Hebrews 12 and verse 1 and 2 something that y'all done heard and I'm not going to be real long because I don't preach long on Sunday mornings I'm overweight and I can't go no longer than 20 minutes and I'm just going to tell you that right now that wasn't even trying to be funny I'm just being real amen 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 
Plus, I believe if you had to do an hour sermon, if they ain't got it in 20, I remember you too, dog. Wop, that's it. I, that's it. I remember you, Wop. That's it. They've been knowing me since I was a little boy. Wop crazy ain't it smiling. <laughs> now, that's what I'm talking about. Everybody can laugh. Amen. 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 Because we all got an appointment. And this is just an appointment we all got to make one day. We all got to pass through the death route. Amen. If we want to get to heaven, everybody talking about I want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to take and make this appointment. Amen. But we're going to have to get it done one day. And it ain't when you want it. It's when God say that's it. Amen, somebody. 12 and 1 says, Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And I want to talk about the race of life. That's all I want to talk about is the race of life. Just for a few minutes, just the race. Doc, you've been watching me all service. If I get to going past eight minutes, you just wave your hand like that. Amen. Got it bad. They tell a lie in the pulpit. But look, I just want to talk about the race of life. We're all in a race for our life. Paul used the analogy of a race for the believers to tell us that we're running towards something. And truth of the matter is, you don't even have to be a believer because all of us is in a race. And the race is determined on where you're heading. And that determines on where you're going and where you want to go. Amen, somebody. We're in a race for life because in life we wake up in the morning and we never have enough time in the day to get done all the things that we want to get done. I wish somebody talked to me in here. We, we, we don't even have time enough to sit down and cook sometimes. We'll pop something in the microwave. We on the cell phone. We don't have time to go meet nobody. Talk to them face to face. We sending text messages. We on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I wish somebody talked to me in here. This is the time that we, we in a race. We don't even have time enough to tell folks that we love them on a day to day basis. Some people you might talk to once every week, maybe once every month. It's because we're in a race for our life. We're always running and we never take time out to really enjoy the world and the life that God has given us. Can I get a witness in here? Paul here in the 12th chapter talks about how we are surrounded by witnesses. And the truth of the matter is we're surrounded by folk that have been going through the same thing that we all go through on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't care whether you're grieving. I don't care whether you've been lied on, you got haters. I don't care if you've been talked about or whatever it is. There's somebody that's been going through what you're going through. I wish I had somebody to talk to me in here. We're in a race for our life to find out where is life going to take us. I remember just like yesterday, I had a high top fade. I was in high school. I had it going on. But now I don't have a six pack. I got a done lap. Somebody talk to me in here. I can't grow my hair. I wish somebody talked to me. We in a race for our life. Life will pass you by so quick. And you say, where did the time go? That's where I, I want to end up with you all is just talking about the fact that since we know that life goes by fast because we are here today and gone the next second. I don't care. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be old. Young boys are killing each other. Babies are dying. Death has no respect of age nor person. We're in a race for our life. We need to quit tripping. Me personally, I ain't got time for messy people. Me, period, I ain't got time to be arguing with nobody. Because truth of the matter, when you see folks arguing, you don't nobody walk by and say, look at that one person arguing with that ignorant person. They're going to say, look at them two fools arguing with each other. Guess what? You can't control what somebody else do and what somebody else say, but you can control what you do and what you say. And we living in a time where we need to get our life and house in order for God is going to call our number one day. We're going to be just like this sister here, laying here. Folks that probably want to tell her they love her and they can't right now. Hello, somebody. Wish you would have done this, but you didn't. You hear what I'm saying? And that's how I am now, smiling the way I, I'm going to love everybody. I don't care how you treat me. And that's how we ought to be. I'm going to tell you about a story, then I'm out of here. I told you I wasn't going to be long. He's 
flicking with his nails. I must be getting close to eight minutes. <laughs> Little old lady named Anna, she was so sick. She was in hospice. She called on the pastor. Anna loved the pastor. She didn't miss a Sunday. The pastor come to the hospital and check on her. He said, baby, what's going on? She said, look here, I know I ain't got nothing but a little time left. I need you to help me get all my stuff in order. She said, look, I want to leave my house to my son. and I want to leave this here to my daughter and my other daughter. She said, and also, whenever the program is made up, I want you to make sure they pick out this picture for me because this is when I look real good. She said, not only that, but this is who I want on the program. And she said, make sure that Bible that you got me when I turned 70, I want you to make sure I got that Bible in the casket with me because I really like that Bible. And it got my name on it, and you signed your name, Pastor. He said, Anna, I'll do anything you want to. I love you, baby. He said, you just know you got to trust in God. She said, I ain't worried about a thing. As he was leaving out of the room, Anna said, wait a minute. I forgot one thing. He said, what was that, Anna, babe? She said, I forgot. I want you to put a fork in my hand while I'm in the casket. Pastor said, this woman had lost her mind. Why in the world you want a fork in your hand? She said, whenever somebody fix you a meal, and whenever you finish your meal, they always tell you to keep your fork. And the reason why I like it is because whenever they tell me to keep my fork, I know the best is yet to come. And I'm just reminded of what the old saints say, that early in the morning, in the sweet by and by, y'all hear what I'm saying? Now, if you just keep your fork, which is your faith, you'll believe that you'll be able to see your mama one day. You'll be able to see Jesus in a day where every day will be Sunday and sweet Sabbath will have no end. Liars won't be there. Backbiters won't be there. Backstabbers won't be there. No more light bill, water bill. No more doctor bill, medication, arthritis, heartache, heart pain. Every day will be all right. Just hold on to your fork. And that's your faith. And that's all you got to hold on to, young man, is your faith. Folks say, I'm going to call you. Five years later, there's a lot of folks ain't called me since my granny been dead. Late in the midnight hour when you ain't got nobody to call, and ain't nobody calling you, the only thing you can do is call on Jesus. That's so all you got is your faith. I don't care what nobody else believe or what nobody else think. Ain't nobody got no heaven or hell to put none of us in. But all you got to hold on is your faith and your relationship with God. Amen, y'all. Morticians, y'all come on. This family done been here long enough. Amen. God bless y'all. I love you. And you hang in there. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some sleepless nights. But when I but when I look around and I think things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days I, I won't come Sometimes the clouds hang low. I can't hardly see the road. I asked a question, Lord. Lord, why so much pain? What's best for me? 
Although these weary eyes, they can't see. So I just say, thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. But God, he's been so good to me. in this old world and you could ever be he's been so good to me 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 he dried all of my tears away turn my midnight into day so I lift my hand and I say thank you Lord I've been lied on but thank you Lord I've been talked about but thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord I won't complain cause God he been so good to me So well, and you could ever be. He's been so good. He's been so. He's been so good. 